Hey, it's Keegan with the Kentucky Welding Institute. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over how I weld three different alloys, carbon, stainless, and chrome. And the tips and tricks that I use to make these welds pass x-ray. Let this video be a guide and a reference point for you to come back to just in case if you forget something or you go on a job and you need to maybe brush up or you haven't welded a type of material in a while. So you can come back to this video, get a couple tips and tricks and hopefully make that weld good. Let's get to it. All right, the first type of material we're gonna be going over is carbon pipe. So with carbon pipe, um, the different sizes of pipe is gonna vary on what temperatures you're gonna use, but here's a rough estimate. If I was gonna weld a two inch piece of carbon pipe, I would put an eighth inch gap and use 332 wire for the root at about 105 amps roughly. Um, I like using the smaller wire on the smaller pipe. It just makes it easier to burn and work with. If you have to use eighth inch wire on smaller pipe, it's, you have to burn hotter, so it's kind of hard to burn hotter on smaller pipe. So whenever I was welding two inch pipe to four inch pipe, I just used 332 wire all the way out. And a six inch, for example, I would probably use eighth inch wire for the root at about 110 to 120 amps, and then use 332 wire to fill and cap it. Um, filling these, you're gonna probably put a hot pass in at about 160 to 170 amps. I use 332 wire to hot pass. And then after that filling and capping, probably right around 180 to 200 to fill it. And then cap it, I would keep it right around the 180 range, um, you know, cause I freehand everything. So that's usually what I would do for two inch to six inch carbon. Now again, those are my heat temperatures for welding carbon. Basically about 105 to 120 on the root, depending on the size. And then the hot pass about 160 or 150, depending on the size of the pipe. And then to fill and cap it about no less than 170 to fill and cap it. And you know, you can do that with 332. Just be careful about doing that with 1 8 wire. You may get lack of fusion. Just make sure you are burning hot enough to burn the eighth inch wire. So that's my tips for welding carbon pipe. And again, if you guys have any questions about this, hit us up on my personal page or KWI's personal page. All right, the next alloy you're probably gonna weld a lot of in the welding industry is going to be chrome. Now chrome welding, um, it is a little bit different than carbon because the pipe is preheated. Sometimes you don't have to put in the root hot pass or fills as hot as you normally would on carbon pipe just because the pipe is already preheated to a certain temperature. Okay, so putting in a root for two inch chrome, I would probably run around 100 amps with 332 wire. Again, smaller the pipe, the thinner the wire that I use. I don't like to use fat wire or thicker wire on small pipe. Filling and capping is gonna be kind of similar. You're gonna run around 140 for a hot pass and for a fill and cap, you're gonna look in, you're gonna be looking around 160 to 180 amps. This is for two inch to six inch pipe. Um, because again, it's already preheated and hot, so you don't need to run too hot. Now, whenever you get into bigger chrome pipe, thicker, uh, larger in inches, meaning like a 12 inch or a 16 inch chrome J bevel, you can run really, really hot with that. Um, a lot of times I'd run my TIG rig at 180 amps for a hot pass. I'd start filling at 230 um, and keep filling it out 230, 270 and sometimes cap it at like 230 or something like that. So you're gonna, you're gonna know more about what you need to do whenever you're in the moment and welding. Um, but again, you don't have to run as hot with chrome pipe. Now, with chrome, whenever you tack up chrome, since it is an alloy, you need to put bridge tacks. So using some kind of nut or piece of metal to tack it up is a great idea. Um, you can bridge tack it as well. Just remember, um, whatever gap you tack it, that's what it's gonna stay. Um, meaning, whenever you bridge tack it, they're gonna have to wrap it with the coils and it's gonna heat up. Whenever it heats up, it's not gonna shrink or move if you've done your bridge tacks right, okay? Um, I was told one time that I need to tack it with a huge gap and whenever the pipe starts heating up, it's gonna shrink. That's not true. Um, I got put in a really bad situation welding a huge gap on chrome and it sucked. So you don't need to tack it with a huge gap before they put the heat wrap on it, okay? Tack it up, bridge tack it with whatever gap you want 
Okay, put four bridge tacks on this thing, let them heat it up, and the gap's gonna be the same. So if you like a 532 gap, tack it with a 532 gap, it's gonna save that gap, okay? Now, whenever you're welding it, it may shrink up, and that's how welding goes. As you get closer to tying in the root, it's gonna get tighter. But if you're just tacking it to put the heat wrap on it, it's not gonna shrink whenever it gets up the temperature, okay? So hopefully that helps you with chrome welding. Again, make sure everything's clean. I always grind my stops and starts and everything like that in between on the root hot pass fills. The next alloy we're gonna talk about is welding stainless pipe. Now stainless is gonna to be totally different from carbon and chrome just because it is a little bit more malleable and it doesn't take a lot of heat to weld stainless pipe. So if I was welding a stainless two inch, um, I'd probably put the root in anywhere from 65 to 95 amps. You don't want it very hot at all usually running an eighth inch gap. Um, I like an eighth inch gap on all my pipe, all my alloys, usually just depending on how it's gonna fit up and weld. Um, so that's just something you have to look out for is not putting yourself in a bind with how tight or how loose your gap is gonna be. So an eighth inch or a 532 gap is gonna be about perfect for any pipe size or alloy. Now another thing about stainless pipe is it eats out really bad, okay? So you need to make sure you have a good purge um, same thing with chrome, but you gotta have a good purge on all alloys other than carbon. And whenever you weld stainless, the edges are gonna eat out real bad. So you need to make sure you're not running too hot and you're feeding a good amount of wire. Um, now a root, again, you're gonna put it in from 65 to 95 amps. Your hot pass, usually around 130. And then filling the cap, um, you know, if it's two inch, maybe 140, 150, taking it real slow with 332 wire. Again, smaller the pipe, the smaller the wire that I use. It's two inch to six inch, I'm gonna use 332 all the way out. If it gets to eight inch and above, I may grab some eighth inch on the fill and cap. But whenever you're doing the root and hot pass, 332 wire, that's what I always use, and it, it was safe whenever you're doing severe cycle x-rays, okay? So for example, let's say you're doing an eight inch schedule 80, um, stainless weld, I would put the root, uh, 532 gap, put the root in with eighth inch wire on the bottom at about 105 to 110 amps, get to the top, grab some 332 wire and sew the root up. And then I would hot pass at about 140. All right, so I would hot pass it around 140 amps and then to fill it, I might grab some eighth inch wire and run about 180 for the rest of the way out and probably fill it and cap it at 180. So that's what I would do for stainless pipe. It's a little bit different than carbon and chrome just because it eats out a whole lot quicker. So hopefully that helps. So those are your three main basic type of alloys. And if you can weld any of those three with those tips and tricks and temperatures, then you can weld any alloy out there. And what I mean by that is any other alloy like ink and ale, copper nickel, super duplex, they're all gonna be a variation of car carbon. They're all gonna be a variation of carbon, stainless, and chrome. So you may have to change your temperature a little bit, you may have to change your technique or style, but they are all gonna at least have one of those three properties of the carbon, stainless, and chrome. Uh, so that's the biggest thing is if you can weld those three, then you can about weld anything. You just have to adjust your mind and temperature. And one of the biggest tips with TIG welding is you create the puddle with the TIG torch and then you add wire into the molten puddle. So you're not trying to burn the wire with the TIG torch, you're just trying to create a puddle that melts the wire, okay? So if you can keep those things in mind, you can weld any alloy out there. It may just take a couple minutes to get used to it or figure out what you need to do. So carbon, stainless, and chrome. Okay, smaller the pipe, use smaller wire. Bigger the pipe, use bigger wire and more heat, okay? That's the main tips that I have for welding carbon, chrome, and stainless. Hopefully it helps you. Um, don't overthink it. You, it. Once you start overthinking stuff, that's when you start welding bad. So once you learn it and get the technique down, don't think about it anymore. Just weld it how you know how to weld it. So hopefully this helps you guys on the next time you go to a job or welding one of these three alloys or variations of these alloys. You can do it and we'll catch you on the next one.